Yes. I wonder, did you get any emails and emails from any atheists following your desecration of the God delusion? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's kind of thing you expect, isn't it? Because we're all such militant related beings. And Richard is our Pope. <laughs> but no, they don't actually seem to express those kinds of values. Yes? Um, I was wondering, like, uh, how to promote atheism, like what tactics you should use, like how do you make a big splash in the media? Well, I just did something, you know, that, that kind of thing always works. Uh, what we need is we need a diversity of approaches, um, that there are going to be some of us who are going to be a little bit more flamboyant than others and are going to be the offensive sorts of things, well, things that, they are not really offensive, except that people take them as offensive. Um, but there's always going to be people like that, but there's also going to be people who do things like like write books, who get on news shows and talk about atheism, who promote atheist values. Uh, there, there's a whole range of different, different approaches. And, and you know, I mentioned one of the things, so number three was be different, express your differences. Uh, this is what you have to do. Some of you will find it incredibly impolite to desecrate the cane waiver, uh, but we'll have other outlets that you'll use to get your message across. And that's what we have to encourage us. Uh, don't think you have to emulate me. I'm not your role model. I refuse. Uh, <laughs> we are all our own role models. We have to go off on our own course. Do you think that we can make much of an immediate political difference, or is it a matter of this age of waiting for sort of the younger, more secular generation to grow up? No, I think we can make a difference. Uh, number two, organize. Yes. <laughs> That's what you are doing, is that you are forming uh, you know, fellowships of common interest and you're being public about it. And that means that you have more and more influence on politics, on, on, on the public. Uh, that's what we have to do, is continue to do that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's not like, you know, all of a sudden we're going to rule the world instantly. You know, I'm, I'm, giving, a, I'm giving us 20 years or so to conquer the world. But you're going to have this gradual increase of your influence. And that's what we hope for. Uh, it, it's also a case where, uh, this is politics, which means you have to interact with all these other people, including people who believe in very crazy things. And we have to find this common ground <coughs> to produce actual good political outcomes. So, yeah, don't, don't, you know, when I say we're going to conquer the world, that doesn't mean next week we're done and the atheist empire is here. It means <laughs> you'll be gradually increasing what you can do as communities. Yes? Um, I just have a question about, um, you know, a lot of the questions that we asked are sort of anti-theist, anti-religious, and I was just wondering whether you think that the atheism movement, the secularism movement, exists solely in its lack of religion or its anti-theism, or whether there's a positive Oh, yeah, movement. no, that, that's a good question. That, that I, I'm guilty of this as well, that we often get distracted by the fact that we've got these raving loonies running around running things. And, and we get very anti-theistic and very anti-religious. I, I think it's a necessary first step that we want to break the power of people who rule in the name of unreason. But at the same time, we do have one common value that we hold that we think is a positive value and it's got to be promoted more in how we run our, our planet. And that is the power of reality. That what we're saying is that everything we do has to be measured against real-world results. That empiricism is an important part of our interactions with the universe. And that's quite independent of what many religious groups believe. And, and so, you know, that's, that's our positive message, is, uh, has anybody seen a, a nice little t-shirt from XKCD, Science, It Works, Bitches? <laughs> <laughs> that's our motto. <laughs> that's what does things. Yeah. Um, you're talking about earlier the need to be sort of varied and active and visible. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's the best strategy in Australia? Because a recent, uh, there was like a recent Gallup poll and it said 70% of Australians don't consider God important. So if you go and smear Vegemite on a cracker in America and then the entire Catholics go crazy, you look, come out looking good and the Catholics come out looking bad. Oh, yes. But here people will say, you know, what's, what's your big deal? Religion's not a big issue in Australia. Why are you going up? Uh, no, that, that's, a really, that's, that's actually what I kind of expected in the U.S. When I did that, I expected 
that what I would get is a lot of people who would be telling me, well, you're, you're an unbeliever, you don't believe in nutcrackers. Uh, you no, know, that's not a big deal, you're just doing something stupid. <laughs> that's really what I expected, that's not what I got. I, I predicted if you did something similar in, in Australia, you would find that there's a minority that will, that will scream bloody murder at what you've done. Uh, so, yeah, and, and what I would say is that it has to be tailored for each place. That we're all different. Australia is different from the United States, and thank God for that. <laughs> and you have to have your tactics here that be different from the tactics I use in the United States. And I, I think that's just fine. That's an appropriate thing to do. Tailor for the community you're in. Two questions. First of all, what part of the world do you want with the New Ideas Empire? What part, oh, what part, part of, of the world do you want to rule? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> So which, mean, which, wait, wait, I, which I, island do you want? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I thought I was going to be the emperor and get it all. <laughs> I have to choose? <laughs> well, okay, well, I, I, if, if I had to choose, I'd just say I get the oceans. <laughs> Second question is, how important do you think it is for teachers of other subject areas other than the sciences to be pushing uh, critical yes. thinking and things like that? Oh, it's, it should be throughout the curriculum. Um, you know, if you read my blog, you find I, I talk a lot about creationism because I'm a biologist, that's, that's the main conflict. But uh, if you look at American history, teaching American history, it's even worse that we've got these uber patriots all over the United States who claim that founding fathers could do no wrong, etc., etc., and they're working to enthrone that in the history books. So, yeah, it's throughout the curriculum. Um, I, I just happen to be a biologist, so I focus on that one little slice of the pie. But yeah, uh, history is a really good example. Of it, isn't it? If you know any historians, are there historians here? Yes, okay, a few historians <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, you know that history is all about the critical evaluation of sources. That's number one. Uh, what you do is evaluate the source and say, well, this tells you what it tells you about the past. And you work it into a story that integrates a lot of information. It's just like science in that regard. So it's, it's throughout the curriculum. Yeah. Uh, these okay, over here. Uh, um, I just mentioned earlier that free speech is something that we kind of hold here because we like to argue and throw ideas around. Um, and in this country, over the last um, couple of years anyway, um, there's been a, a plague of censorship rules. Yeah. The rules. Um, most notably, the, the internet censorship. But it even goes back to Howard kind of bringing the Sedition Acts. And um, in this state, there was. Um, a religious body um, trying to change the laws so that uh, the discrimination laws for um, churches and their organisations such as their charities, which they do have like mm -hmm. hospitals and things, were changed so they could discriminate on gender, sexual orientation, marital status, basically setting us back a hundred years. We're just like that in the United States. How, how, what, what is your strategy for going up against I don't know, a government that doesn't want you to speak, doesn't want you to talk? This is one of the virtues of the internet, is that right now the internet isn't censored. There's ways to get around attempts at censorship. So, uh, again, if you follow my blog, you might have noticed in the last few weeks there's been a real battle for uh, framing and the proper way of saying things. And uh, Should people be allowed to use profanity on the internet? <laughs> Which is, it's, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. You know? Uh, that free speech, you know, what you got to do is get across the message that free speech isn't just allowing people to say the things you want them to say. It's, it's allowing them to say things that you find incredibly offensive and defending it from, uh, from all angles. That, for instance, I'm not going to be a very persuasive speaker if I try to say, well, you should allow atheists to say, express themselves, say whatever they think, and say, say it however they want. Uh, because everyone knows that's my bias. I'm all in favor of that. Uh, but where it becomes persuasive is when people of my ideology say we've also got to allow Christians to express themselves freely and don't censor the internet for anyone. Uh, and then all of a sudden it will come home to other people that, oh, I mean, the Censorship Act might affect the Baptists or the Mormons or the Scientologists or whatever my particular interest is, and, and then you find common cause. Uh, one more thing is in the United States we've got this great example. Uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State is our bigger organization fighting for uh, free expression and also you know, trying to prevent people from this kind of bias of only promoting religious point of view. 
And, and one of the common messages there is in the United States, separation of church and state was a principle enacted to protect religion from the influences of government. And, and a lot of people have forgotten that, that this was initially, this, this wall of separation between the church and the state was erected on behalf of Danbury Baptists. The Baptists didn't want the churches to be oppressed or treated wrongly by politics. They want independence. Uh, and it's the same thing here. You know, we're not just fighting for atheists, we're fighting for everybody. Anti-censorship anti -censorship should be a common cause for everyone, no matter what.